All right, welcome to the very first episode here on the new Metal Bent Chronicles channel of Metal Album Warfares. Yes. Now, this is a series I actually started on my old YouTube channel, and I'm, I thought, you know what, I'm going to bring it back. I really enjoyed doing it. I had shot this video on Saturday, but it ended up being way, way, way too long. And you know what, I ended up deleting the video. <laughs> So I'm going to try to narrow this down to 10 minutes. So on the very first episode of Metal Albums Warfare here on the new YouTube channel. We're going to put up two bands which I should have put up against each other on the old series on the other channel. For the first episode and I didn't. We're going to take the two biggest names in thrash metal. We're going to start off with Metallica's debut album from 1983, Kill 'Em All. Which came out on Megaforce Records. Versus. Megadeth's debut album. Killing is my business and business is good. From 1985. Released on Combat Records. Let's just get right into this. Let's not waste any time. We already know the back history. Well you should know the back history of Metallica. And what's led into Megadeth, you know, as far as Dave Mustaine goes. So let's just get into a track by track analysis. Hit the Lights begins this album. Oh my god, what a great way to begin this debut album by Metallica. It just explodes, man. It has that climatic buildup and then it just explodes with pure fury and aggression. Yes. And arguably, probably the very first thrash metal song. That's up for debate, you know. Because you had songs like Fast as a Shark, Fast as a Shark by Accept at the time, 666 by Anvil, um, you know, Raven did a lot of proto thrash metal type of tunes, Venom, you know, Motorhead, you know, bands like that. The Four Horsemen is next, now originally called The Mechanics, on the No Life to Leather demo. And written by Dave Mustaine. Um, yeah, another awesome track. My favorite probably on Kill 'Em All, to be honest. Such a killer track. When I used to play in my old band, we used to cover this track. And man, it was a lot of fun to play, man. I really, really would get into this track when we would cover it. And yes, you know, this track's definitely made more epic with that intro, or with that um, middle section, I mean. You know, just killer, killer stuff. Then we get into Motor Breath. Short little fast number with a Motorhead type of vibe to it, you know. Yes. Nothing more to say. Just a cool little speed metal track. Jump into Fire is next. Now you can tell Dave Mustaine's hand it's all, all over this track, man. I mean, this is definitely Dave Mustaine's playing. It's a killer track. I love Jump into Fire. You know, awesome soloing, you know. Just a killer, killer track. And the original Jump Into Fire would be, um, or yeah, the original lyrics to Jump Into Fire would be ditched because of the juvenile, you know, attitude of it. And yeah. And this was arguably the first song Dave Mustaine ever wrote on guitar. Anyways, Anastasia Pulling Teep is next. Holy cripe. Amazing instrumental by Cliff Burton, the late Cliff Burton. Still gives me chills up and down my spine to this day when I listen to it after over 30 years of, you know, listening to this album. You know, it still gives me chills even watching Cliff and all or watching old videos on YouTube of Cliff, you know, playing live. It, it just gives you chills. Whiplash. All right. The thrash metal anthem of this freaking album. Beer thrash. You know, what more could be said? Bang your heads against the freaking stage, man. Thrash! Anyways, Phantom Lord is next. Another kick-ass song, man. Just pure... Yeah, just a pure, like, punky thrash metal type of tune. Again, you know, has a bit of a Motorhead type of vibe going on to it, you know. Now, this version of the Phantom Lord on Kill 'Em All is different from the No Life to uh, Leather demo version, you know. Because they add in that little melodic mellow section. Similar to what they did with the Four Horsemen, you know. Pretty cool. Great track, though. I like the Phantom Lord, too. No Remorse is next. Awesome track. You can definitely hear the Diamond Head influence on this track. 
Especially if you think of songs like Sucking My Love, you know. Great track. Killer track. Seek and Destroy, the most anthetic track on this freaking album. Probably the most popular track on this album. I mean, it's been in their live set since 1982, when they were playing in the clubs, you know, during No Life to uh, Leather, you know, back in San Francisco or whatever. But it's anthetic, and rightfully so, why it's still in Metallica's live set. And then we end the album with the fierce metal militia. Just killer, killer, speed, thrash metal, man. What more could be said? Great rips. You can tell Dave Mustaine wrote this. Yeah, man, just killer, killer stuff. All right, let's move on to... In the other corner, Killing is My Business and Business is Good from 1985. Now, you know, Dave Mustaine got fired by Metallica. And on that bus ride home from New York, Dave Mustaine was writing a bunch of songs. And he basically wrote enough songs for three albums, which, you know, they would end up on the first three Megadeth albums. You know. Anyways, Last Rites Love to Death begins this album. You know, it begins with that classical piano piece, pretty odd beginning, I guess, for a thrash metal album at that time. But then it just explodes into pure fury. And you can tell Dave Mustaine's pissed. He's out for fucking Metallica's blood. You know, when this track explodes, man. Very complex rhythm guitar playing on this track. It's very hard to play on guitar, too. Yeah, it's just explosive. It's Last Rites Love to Death, man. I Probably one of my favorites off this album. Yes, by far. Just explosive. Then we get into Killing Is My Business and Business Is Good. The self-titled track again. Another furious, explosive track with complex rhythm guitar work. Now, notably, there's, I don't think there's much Chris Pullen on this album compared to Peace Sells, but who's buying? I mean, yeah, it just seems like Dave Mustaine's doing most of the solos on this first album. You know? Skull Beneath the Skin is next. It's got that little creepy intro to it where Dave's, like, kind of finger-tapping the guitar, you know? It's pretty cool. Great track. I like Skull Beneath the Skin. Then we get these boots, cover track. Nancy Sinatra hated this track. She was going to sue Megadeth over this track. Why, you know, the original version basically got removed from Killing Is My Business. But luckily, I had the version with these boots on it. But yeah, <laughs> it's a pretty hilarious cover, but I would say it's the weakest track on here because it's a cover. Rattlehead is next. Again, to me, this is Megadeth's answer to Whiplash. It's got that thrash metal anthetic-ism to it, you know. Rattle your goddamn head like Dave Mustaine says, you know. Just killer, explosive stuff. Now this track you can hear Cliff, or excuse me, this track you can hear Chris pulling all over it. He's doing all the lead fills on it, and it's really, really impressive stuff. Man, and definitely, I would say, the fastest track on this album. Chosen Ones is next, um, kind of has a Motorhead vibe to it, you know. You know, yeah, the, rib the ribbon section definitely reminds me of Motorhead. Pretty cool track, you know. I like it. Dave Ellipson does a cool little bass line in there, you know. Looking Down the Cross is next. Freaking cool track. I like Looking Down the Cross. It's got a creepy, atmospheric type of intro. It's probably one of the more mid-paced tracks on here, but it does speed up near the end. It's a good track. Then we get the mechanics. Now, this was a Metallica track, but it was written by Dave Mustaine, obviously. And it was once originally called the mechanics on the No Life to Leather demo, like I mentioned. Of course, Metallica changed it over to the Four Horsemen. Now, which version's better? Because I do like both versions. I mean, the mechanics is played way faster. It doesn't have that melodic middle section like the Four Horsemen does. But for me, you know, I love the mechanics, don't get me wrong, but I'm going to have to go with the Four Horsemen. All right, so now we're going to narrow it down. Which album is better? Which album wins this feud? 
you know, I love this album. I think this is a tremendous debut. It's one of my favorite thrash metal debuts. But man, to me, Kill 'em All takes it. Kill 'em All takes it. I just think the musicianship on here, because of Cliff Burton, it's a tad better. Yes, this is more complex. And I should mention Gar Samuelson's drumming. It's freaking insane, man. Rest in peace to Gar Samuelson. Rest in peace to Cliff Burton, by the way. But yes. But yeah. Kill 'em all wins. You know? And that's it for this very first episode of Metal Album Warfare.